What up, YouTube? Um, on this phone here, we got Instagram Live also. Um, so please say hello to Instagram Live at Robin Black MMA on Instagram. YouTube, we are going to chat about Amanda Nunez and Raquel Rocky Pennington. Um, super stoked about it. Uh, Pennington, I was going to say Pennington in particular, um, which is kind of rude, actually, of me to say. But um, my mom hates Amanda Nunez. My mom does. Um, and this is going to be, this is weird. But this tells you how big Rhonda is. I see my mom uh, two days after, and she, my parents are in Vegas sometimes, and I see my mom two days after uh, Nunez versus Rhonda. And my mom has like a voice like this, and she's got like a leftover Welsh accent. And uh, she goes, who, and who was that woman that Rhonda fought? Like... My mom doesn't even watch fighting. What is going on? But they were in Vegas, and it was a big thing. It was Ronda. And this is green juice. I said, um, well, that was Amanda Nunes. And my mom's like, she was so rude to Ronda. I'm like, what the fuck? But this is how big Ronda Rousey is, right? Is my mom. Your mom knows who Ronda Rousey is. Um yeah, like your mom knows who Ronda Rousey is. Um, so Amanda Nunes beat that woman. You know, she beat that woman. She, she beat her up. Um, but I don't know. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Like, she's a very good fighter. Um, you should hear Mike Thomas Brown and Dean Thomas and those guys talk about her. You know, on the record, they say great things about her. But sometimes television or... Or, you know, when you point a camera at somebody, they say the things they're supposed to say, but when the camera's not on, you see their truth. And those guys just think she's, think the world of her. So, so she's a very special martial artist, Amanda Nunez, very special martial artist. Um, but Rocky Pennington, there's something we connect to. You know what I mean? Just, she doesn't care. I don't know, like, is she a Diaz brother? I mean, she's kind of a Diaz brother, right? Like, she's more or less disinterested in all this stuff. Uh, Mark and I were talking about it earlier. Um, she's not going to go sightseeing in, <laughs> while she's in Brazil. You know, not going to care about any of that stuff. She care The fight itself is what she's there for. So when you look at it, what are we looking at? Where, where are the, the problems? Where are the weaknesses on what we can analyze and what we have access to? And the weakness is... When you're looking at it and you pull up Raquel Pennington, we have not seen her fight since she fought Misha Tate, right? So let's see when that was. I just got my, my computer here. Uh, she fought Misha Tate in November 12th of 2016. Now, I don't know about you. Okay, so that's going to be May. This is May, right? That's five. That's 18 months ago. 18 months ago. I don't know about you, but if you dedicate your life to something for 18 months, how much better can you get? You know, we've been working on this for what, about 13 months? Just think of the things we know that we didn't know. Just, you know, like the amount of growth, learning, change that you can make in 18 months is, I just switched this to show what I'm looking at, which is weird. Uh, they're like, what is that? And there's like a stuffed thing over there and stuff. Um, the amount of growth you can have in 18 months is massive. Massive. Like it's massive. Think of that. Go and, and train anything. You know, four hours a day, 11 sessions a week of something. Train something. Piano, gymnastics, you know, lighting a fire. It doesn't matter. Like, you know, outdoor shit, mountain climbing, you know, reading, uh, speaking, anything. Train it for 18 months and tell me wh what happens. And this is the fundamental flaw of any discussion that we're going to have about Raquel Pennington. Other than any attributes that we see present in her. And even as I said that out loud, I'm like, fuck, you become that completely different person in 18 months with effort. A very grumpy person 18 months later can be happy. A obsessive person can relax. Somebody who doesn't take training seriously can become brilliant. You know what I mean? 
everything changes at the fundam. So you have to go back to the, to try to extrapolate what any of this change can mean. You have to go to the fundamental building blocks of whatever you see, if you can see something in those people. And Raquel Pennington, you see will, right? You see will. Now, will, the will to win, the will to succeed, the will to push through fire, the will to overcome things, now apply that to hard work for 18 months, right? Um, I saw something about um, skill and talent. And somebody, the, and I think we've talked about this before, talent times effort equals skill. So if you have some kind of talent, you apply effort, and the amount of effort you put in, it turns into a skill. It will become a skill. Skill times effort. Take the skill and work hard with it equals accomplishment. So that's where Raquel Pennington is. So, we, so if we just say the things that we see, knowing that what we see is not all there is, but... Raquel Pennington's tough, she's fearless, she's got great hands, she's ornery, she takes a punch, she will smash through any, uh, you know. You see what she did to Misha Tate and apply this idea of talent, her effort that seems evident, becoming skill, and then becoming accomplishment. We don't know what she could have accomplished. And the same will go for, for Amanda Nunes. You start looking down at Amanda Nunes, and we were looking at this earlier, talking about Amanda Nunes. Uh, she beats Valentino Shevchenko in five rounds. But I thought, I mean, I, I read and I heard and I saw everywhere, she's got no cardio. And in the later rounds, she will fade, fold. Um, what we saw, now again, that is September of 2017. Yeah, so that's going to be eight months ago by the time this fight happens. What we did see was a strategic answer to that issue, which felt like an issue when she fought Shevchenko the first time as she really weakened in the third round. Now, that one was her last fight before she fought uh, Misha for the title, and that one was 2016. So 2016 till, till September of 2017, in those 17 months... Again, 17 fucking months. If, if I say to you right now, you've got this really big thing happening in five months. Let's say you're getting married in five months. Or let's say, you know, you, you're going to be in something and, and you're some photos or somebody's got you on some TV show or something that's going to be recorded or who knows what. And you say, I got five months, I better get in shape. Mark, if I said, let's get you into shape, what do you think? How long do you think would be really a good time till you're like blown away by how in shape you can be? Four months? Hard work, crazy hard work, four months. Three months, three to four months. Any of you watching at home, this, if you're not in great shape right now, you are only four months away from being like, holy shit, I can't believe the shape that I'm in. I've lost four months, you can lose 30, 40 pounds. Don't drink Coke for three months. And you will lose 20 pounds. Um, you can see it. You can feel it. So when we're, wow, you know, and, and, and I know this is, why do I always um, find these aspects to try to bring out and, and show? It's because on the other side of the wall of these conversations are, is an entirely new paradigm of how to look at fights. On the other side of, the, of, of our barrier that we're at right now, which is the singular paradigm with which we consume fighting on television and everybody makes, and you know, how, how it's been done. We're getting to the, its limit. Baseball's answer to that was just make more stats. Now, fortunately, over time, people who love baseball, this is seven, this is 12 pounds of leafy greens pressed into here. It's pretty tasty. Um, people who love baseball started to love more and more stats. It was a stat-based presentation and analysis over the years and so they just gave more stats we're kind of at that point too where it's like who's the better striker grappler or wrestler then it became who's got more power but who's got more speed but who's got better cardio and uh you know who's got and, and we just tried to compare these 
attributes, knowing full well that you can fucking lose 40 pounds in four months, or you could become a quite a good uh, piano player in 14 months. And these human beings are going through that as well. So there will come a time we don't have to have this conversation anymore once we have comfortably realized that there's a paradigm on the other side of this. And I think that paradigm ultimately is examining the beauty, the, 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 the awesomeness of this art form and these artists through the lens of growth, through the lens of perpetual growth. You know, you see these young fighters doing magical things. How is that possible? Well, not only that, imagine what they will be capable of doing in 5, 10, 12 years if they optimize their effort, they apply effort to skill, they apply effort to talent, and then they get accomplishment of different goals and different skills and different abilities. That's what fighting is. That's what fighting is. That's what we're looking for in this fight. Always that's what we're looking for. You know, people are like, I can't believe... Uh, so-and-so was able to do that. Um, I always forget his name. A brilliant jujitsu guy who knocked out Frankie Edgar and will be fighting for the title against Max Hollywood. What's that? Uh, Brian, Ortega. Brian Ortega. I apologize. I'm a, I love his work. Um, I, people who know know that I have a thing with names, and I wonder if it was too much getting hit in the head. It's names. I can say so he's fighting Max Holloway. He's a brilliant jujitsu player. It's uh, you know um, Gracie breakdown guys trained with him. Like you can go. Uh, it was an elbow in the middle of a space. He got um, Cub Swanson in the second round with a leaping guillotine. Like I, all of those things are adding up. It's just the name will be blocked from my mind. So it's it's not meant as disrespect, and I, I hope. Nobody ever takes it that way. But uh, Ortega's like, you know, he's got better grappling. He's a better jujitsu guy. But Frankie, if he can get his hands going, dude fucking knocked out Frankie. How is that possible? It's possible through growth. It's possible because all things are possible. And the beauty of these conversations is that it takes us to that with us. You know? People, somebody said to me the other day, well, yeah, it's easy for you. You're already like, people already know you in fighting. Yeah, once upon a time, I was a guy play, played in a rock band that made fun of me and didn't want me. Like, everybody has to go through growth and get to something. Amanda Nunes, Ronda Rousey was an unbeatable, unbeatable judo master, mistress, whatever the, the term is, judo mistress, master, I don't know how, mistress. uh, and then she wasn't. And then people wanted to go back and say, yeah, but that was all bullshit. Please don't do that. Like, it wasn't bullshit. Yeah, yeah, as, as if somehow, yeah, man, Aikido gets a bad rap. Joe, that's you. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> if, if and when I ever have the pleasure of going back on Joe's podcast, which he's been kind enough to hang out with me a couple of times, I got to, like, and I, this ain't easy. Right now, you're already asking for trouble even mentioning it. But there is some beauty. It isn't all garbage. I get to spend a lot of time, and last year, I spent a lot of time in China consuming different aspects of Chinese martial arts. I know Aikido is a Japanese martial art. But there are many areas of Kung Fu that people say the same thing about just because a, a lot of the internet has bullshit Kung Fu. Kung Fu is this incredible martial art. Tony Ferguson's using all kinds of long fist techniques. And yet you'll still hear people say, pick up a, a, a shot of Kung Fu and go, this, this is an Amanda Nunes versus Raquel Pennington fight chat, by the way. Uh, they'll pull it up and go, look at this. And there'll be some guy just playing goofball Kung Fu and it's nonsense. That doesn't mean this beautiful, you know, thousand year old art form isn't brilliant. It is. Aikido is a tougher sell, and it's harder to take the other side of it because you have to go back pretty far and find the root of Aikido. The philosophy of Aikido, this is an Amanda Nunes, Rocky Pennington discussion, by the way. The philosophy of Aikido is the philosophy of non-resistance. And it first made sense when every time, actually, we're, we're finding our way back. We're getting back. I, I assure you we will get back. Judo. Push, pull. How does somebody, how does Rhonda fucking throw me through the air? When I resist it, she uses that against me. The concept of non-resistance was a hack to be able to find the way. 
because how do I beat... I, this was another discussion. This was Nate Diaz versus George St. Pierre. But you don't beat a wrestler by wrestling him. You don't. You don't. If Nate Diaz is going to beat George St. Pierre, he's going to take the belief that he can submit him. Just like Tony believes with, with Habib. I didn't say I believe that, so don't come gunning for me. <laughs> People love Habib. And we do too. Um, but uh, this, the believing that is that you can submit the wrestler. That's how you approach it. You don't try to out-wrestle a brilliant wrestler. And you don't go, well, I better learn wrestling. He spent... You really want to wrestle Khabib Nurmagomedov? You saw the bear video. Like, he was a little kid wrestling. You got, you're got you going to spend the next three years becoming a good wrestler? He spent 20. You fucked, right? You have to look to use a different art. Judo, Ronda, you, the concept of non-resistance was made sense in that context. Now, speaking of Ronda, she, what, what she did was real based on the understanding, the global, the community understanding of what worked and didn't work, as well as the psychological intimidation of seeing Ronda Rousey and all of what was real. It was fucking real. And don't come down on Joe anymore for saying once ever. At that time, in that setting, that was once ever. Um, but then she was beaten. And Amanda Nunes, who is currently the best of the best under the paradigm and the way it's understood, one day... Some eight-year-old now would murder, at 17, would murder Amanda Nunes. And that is no disrespect to Amanda Nunes or Raquel Pennington. But the, the, as we watch these beautiful contests come together, we can try to anticipate where it's going. As we see a beautiful piano player play a an incredible song on piano, we can listen to that song, we can dance if we like, and part of us understands that the incredible nature of that piano player is the lifetime of dedication that they've put. And somewhere in our appreciation of fighting, that is at play. And that aspect will be at play uh, when we watch these two fight. It'll be a fuck of a lot more at play than who's got better wrestling and who's got better cage control and who defends the single better, but they're better at the double. None of that is, you're talking about people 17 months later. Who they are matters. And uh, they are both incredibly tough, gritty, scary, driven, desperate to win human beings. That's why, that's why you watch. That's why you watch. Um, the conversation Mark and I had before we shot this was the pressure of Brazil. We used to talk a lot about how pressure it was for you. Coming in there all like they literally are doing this. I've seen it. And they're screaming things in Portuguese that mean we will cut you and we will murder you and we will, we will dance on your entrails and shit. Like it's scary. But now there's also the pressure on the other side and we've seen it. You know, Fabricio Verdum, you know, yes, Stipe knocked him out backing up, and Stipe's a monster, but Fabricio wasn't tuned in. Attention itself, these are all things we can study here. You know, there's something called open attention. If I sit back and I have open attention, I see what's there, and I see what's going on, I imagine this, and you can draw all of these things in open attention. And then there's like focused attention, where you can just zoom right in on one thing. This, these are trainable skills. And Fabrizio Verdum was so in open attention, the people, the crowd, smiling, the face, all of that stuff. This thing required some pretty focused attention. And then there's something called executive attention, where you're actually looking at yourself, your attention. How am I doing? Where am I? Am I focused properly? Am I ready properly? Am I... Uh, properly psychologically aroused? Is everything at play here? Uh, am I physically right? Am I ready? That, all of those are at play here. And that has to be right. And, uh, you know, Pennington also, never been in this level, never been in a five rounder, never been in a main event, right? I mean, there's no, there's no five round fights. I mean, if there's a main event we don't understand or we are making an error, if so, forgive me. Holly Holm could have been a main event, but it might not have been either. I think that was Holly's debut. That's one thing. Oh, yeah. No, it wasn't a main event. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't Holly's debut. Holly fought one other girl first. Uh, okay. Yeah, but, um, yeah. So, I mean, all those things are at play. 
And uh, it's going to be a really fun fight. When I think about Amanda Nunes, and I'm like, I don't, I don't feel directly connected to her as a fan of her work yet. And when I think of that, also, it's like my mom's voice coloring it in. She seemed, my, my mom couldn't name three fighters. I don't think if I said Conor McGregor, she would know who that is. But Ronda, man, she seemed to care. Um, so I'm colored by that. But at the same time, uh, when I think about the words that come from great martial artists about her, you know, their coaches and, and great martial artists and, and great, you know, combat sports people, they celebrate Amanda Nunes. So I'm going to a approach this fight from that point of view, that there are two greats here in women's fighting at this point, in fighting at this point, in Brazil, and it's going to be great. And I'm excited to see it. And I'm excited to be surprised, to see things that you could never have anticipated when you've got two women. And women and the sport of, of female combat, combat, the art of it, but also the sport of it is newer. You know, the art of it is not newer, but the sport of it is newer. And with sport comes commerce. And with commerce comes a higher level of acceptance, training, access to more science and inf information. And because of that, the, the speed at which the women evolve is much, much higher right now. Much higher. So that's what I'm excited about. And I hope you guys dig it. I hope you dig it. And uh, I get it. I get it. I'm still, I'm still working my way through this. I'm still really, I'm trying to find the next layer, the next paradigm. People will be like, well, you're saying what it isn't. So what is important? Trying to, trying to say it, trying to find it. It's the mental, it's the growth, it's the evolution. It's systems analysis, it's change. It's how to pivot. It's all these things. And to find the right way to how we're going to express these, this next paradigm in a meaningful way in a context like this and in a context like television, it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of work. And I'm going to lose some of you on the way. And I'm sorry. I would have loved to, to keep your attention long enough that you came out the other side with me here and we all fucking learned together. But it's hard. It's a very challenging thing. But I love it. And I'm thankful for the challenge. Blackout.